Hello ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing? My name is Apostle Joseph Hendon and I'm coming to you live from Nairobi, Kenya. This is Trapeza TV, the table of heavenly contents. It's Monday today and I teach on wisdom for finance every Monday. Our topic for this broadcast is why time and chance is your biggest investment. Why time and chance is your biggest investment. Now time and chance is your ticket to financial success. Do you realize that intelligence alone doesn't make people successful? Having extraordinary prowess in any area of life is not necessarily your ticket to success. There are many intelligent people, highly educated people who are not successful financially. We're dealing with money now, okay? We're dealing with riches and prosperity, okay? If you wanted to learn other things, then we have other days when we teach on faith, when we teach on grace, the grace of God, different types of graces, when we teach on prophecy, the miracles, when we teach on revelation of the word of God, maturity in Christ Jesus. Yes. But on this particular one, we are dealing with money, how you can make money for yourself, how you can be successful, how you can be prosperous. And I'm telling you right now that your intelligence, book intelligence will not necessarily make you successful financially. Yeah. There's much more to success than just having a degree qualification or a specialized skill. There's much more to it. So let's look at what the Bible says, because that's the standard for life. The Bible is a standard for living. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 11 says, I returned and so under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to wise to the wise, nor yet rich to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. But time and chance comes to them all. Now, I'll read the scripture again. Yeah. I returned, and so under the sun. This is Solomon, the wise king, talking that the race is not to the swift. So those people who win, let's say, marathons or sprints, are usually not the swiftest. They're the ones who've got the time and the chance to do so. That the battle is not the strong. The strong will not always win battles. And that is not to the wise, that those who have food or take around their dinner tables are not necessarily the wisest, nor yet riches to men of understanding, that your discernment will not necessarily bring you riches, nor yet favor to men of skill, that your skill as a scientist, as an artist, as an athlete, as a sports person, or whatever you do, will not necessarily bring you favor. In other words, it won't bring you acceptance, elegance, or charm. Because what favor there is hen, C H E N. I taught on this two weeks ago on Sunday. Please go look for it. But time and chance happen. So, so now to succeed in life, you need the following qualities. And they must be used within the framework of time and chance. So the qualities are needed to learn, and these qualities ought to be used within the framework of time and chance. Number one, you must have speed. To be successful in life, you need to be a person who does things quickly. Don't take too long. If you're in business and you're not supplying your goods quick enough, someone else will beat you to it. If you're a teacher and you take too long to get students to learn certain concepts, then you might end up failing in life. You need speed. That's the reason why, as we're speaking right now, certain entrepreneurs in the world are working on the hyperloop where instead of five hours traveling to a certain place in the tube will create people will be traveling for just 30 minutes this is the reason why everybody's looking for internet that has higher speed internet that is quick that is fast speed is important so you also need to do your work speedily don't procrastinate okay be quick be efficient don't postpone what needs to be done do it before you sleep don't say, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. If you've got time, do it. If you don't have time, create it. All right? You can stretch your time. All right? King Artaxerxes of Ahasuerus commanded that the repairs and the beautification of God's house were to be done speedily. That everything that kings want done, they always want them to be done fast, quickly. Yeah? In Ezra 7, 21, the king says, and I, even Artaxerxes, the king do make a decree to all treasurers who are beyond the river that whatsoever Ezra the priest, the scribe of the law of the God of heaven, shall require of you, it be done speedily. So you need speed. Do your things quickly. If you have something to type, type it quickly. If you have a responsibility 
or a deadline meet that deadline long before the expected date okay speed 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 number two activate strength from within your spirit as you speak in tongues and as you declare god's word in all situations so it's your choice to be strong the sight put on the full armor of god so you need to be strong strength is a choice okay in your mind think of strength even if your body feels weak in fact that's where you get healed by pastor in case there is any form of infirmity in your body ephesians 6 verse 10 to 11 says finally my brethren be strong in the lord and in the power of his might put on the full armor of god that you may be able to stand against the wilds of the devil so being strong is a command you're called to be strong so don't lose hope and don't give up be strong when things are difficult what is expected of you and required of you is strength strength of character be strong be strong could you please switch on this light be strong okay i'm just talking to the media man to switch on one of the lights yes that's better great thank you so much all right number three you must activate wisdom through speech you need to be a person who activates wisdom through speech. This wisdom is called Hoth. I've taught on this wisdom many times, so go look for it in on my Facebook page and places like that. It's wisdom for administration, wisdom for winning battles, wisdom for accounts, for planning, for wit inventions. This is wisdom for creativity, Hochma wisdom. So activate wisdom through your speech. Speak words that are creative. Don't speak what's negative. As a child of God, don't say I'm sick. Say, though I may feel pain in my body, I am healed in Jesus' name. Though I may feel tired, God's strength is made perfect in me. Okay? I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Speak what the Bible says. Don't speak what you feel. Don't speak what you're going through. Don't say I'm broke. Say, I am blessed and I'm connected to God's supply system in the mighty name of Jesus. So, activate Chokmah with them. Okay? Proverbs 4 verse 7 says, Wisdom or Chokmah is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Get Chokmah. And with all they getting, get understanding. Okay? Number four, you must have understanding, perception, or discernment. This comes from a good knowledge of God's word, but you must also have superior knowledge in your area of expertise. Okay? Or in your area of enterprise. So use Hochma to build your enterprise and discernment or understanding to establish it. Finally, use knowledge to furnish it. Proverbs 24, 3 to 4 says, Through Chokmah, through wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding it's established. Okay. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Number five, you must have skill. Every single human being on the face of the earth has a talent or skill. Of course, you need to practice that talent or skill until it's exemplarily superior or good. Yeah, so this is the kind that makes the skillful person one with the skill they have so if it's in music you need to be highly skilled versatile you need to be up ready to play your music or to sing it with the best tone the best voice possible whatever you do whether it's in sport whether it's cooking or what be skillful do your thing skillfully i'm teaching you on how you're going to be successful how time and chance is your ticket to success okay you need to practice so much that you're skilled and you become one Precision is significant here as it brings forth efficiency and efficacy. You need to be precise in the things you do. No shoddy work. Hebrews 5 verse 13 to 14 says, For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. But even in the Bible, in the word of God, you need to be skillful. Yeah? Yeah. Milk is for spiritual babies. So Paul says that the one who continues to use milk, the elementary things of the kingdom of God, is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he's a babe. He's a nephews, okay? But strong meat, please go and study my teachings on various levels of development and growth in the Christian faith, from Brefos to Nepios to, to Pideon to Meamiscos to Uihos to Telios. Six different levels of growth, okay? Um, using Greek words, okay? Those are not English words, they're Greek words. Because the English language is a bit limited when it comes to some of these deep spiritual things. Yeah? Verse 13. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he's a babe. This is Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13. Now verse 14 says, But strong meat belongs to them 
that are full of age, tellius, the word full of age, tellius, even those who by reason of use or by practice have their senses exercised, they keep exercising, they keep practicing. Now they're able to discern both good and evil. Now these five things are important to anyone that needs success. However, the five points are, aren't enough. You need something more. You can have them and still remain broke. We're talking about money here. The game changer is what we call time and chance. Now, let's define time. What is time? Time is an occurrence, an occasion. It's an experience and it's a fortune. That's the definition. The spiritual definition of time is that it's an occurrence, it's an occasion, it's an experience, and it's a fortune. That's what time is. So any moment you get an occasion, you need to know how to monetize that moment. If you're meeting important people, see how you can talk to them so that somewhat you're able to get into their system or to work with them. No meeting, no occurrence is for nothing. So it's an occasion for your success. That thing occurred, whatever occurs is for your success. Do you realize that pe there are people who monetize even death? They run mortuaries, they run funeral homes. They're undertakers, they're paid money to embalm dead bodies. They take op opportunity of any form of occurrence to be successful. And then experience. The Bible says experience gives you hope and that hope does not disappoint. But the love of God is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. Experience is your ability to handle something skillfully, sustainably, okay, skillfully, efficiently, and sustainably. That's the experience. When you're skillful in something, and when you're efficient in that thing, and when you can sustain it, that's called experience. So you can prove that you've been able to do this particular task or succeed in this particular thing over a given period of time. So then you can be trusted, okay? So time is a what? An occurrence, an occasion, an experience, and it's also fortune. Time is fortune. You see, a person who doesn't have as much experience in life may not earn as much during their time. For example, one hour of your time could be worth a certain number of dollars. But there are people who have even gone beyond the time. For them, every second, so many millions of dollars are coming their way. Because of how they invested in what we call passive income. Income that comes your way even when you're asleep. One of the ways you can get passive income is to write books. Okay? Or to come up with products that can sell when you're asleep. Or do NFTs, non-fungible tokens. Okay? Or non-fungible, you can say fungible if you like. Non-fungible, fungible commodities or tokens. Okay? These are things like paintings. I remember I was studying a certain I do the bee and what um, I forget the second one I'll get it the spirit of God reminds me two companies that uh, the most successful auctioneering companies in the world yeah and they would sell pieces of art they actually focus mostly on pieces of art which are you know tokens that cannot be fungible what what is a fungible or fungible token one that can be replaced by another. But you cannot replace a piece of art with another. You cannot replace my song with another song. So my song is non-fungible. So these people go auctioning some of these things right now in um, cryptocurrency, in blockchain technology. Such things are going on. Now, blockchain technology needs tremendous skill and wisdom. Otherwise, you lose your money. Yeah, the cryptocurrency and all that. Sometimes a coin is earning you so much money, suddenly it's all crashed. So you've got to be wise. You've got to depend on the Holy Spirit to let you know when to sell, when to call, when to put, okay? If you understand what the, those languages are in the money markets, okay? So time is a fortune. And you can, you can actually bypass time by getting into e-commerce. So you have content. They say now in the United States and world over right now, they say content is king. How are you using your social media? to criticize people or to create content that one day will turn into money for you. And even if that content doesn't turn into money for you, when people begin to follow the things you do and you get a lot of followers, you become an influencer and people will want to advertise to gain your influencers as their customers. They'll pay you money because you have a following. So don't waste the moment. Don't waste the time you use on social media. 
talking crazy, useless, foolish things. Instead, use that moment as your fortune. Time is fortune, okay? Did you get that? So the rich use their time wisely because they know that it's fortune. So when you add wise use of time to the five points that I've mentioned above, you begin to see fortunes, okay? Now, turn every occasion, every occurrence, every experience into opportunity for business. Never be discouraged or distraught when things don't work or when you lose or when you're fired or when business fails. People fail many times before they finally make it, so don't worry. Things are not that slow in your life. Just learn your lessons, okay? So there are occasions for growth, especially if you fail. That's an occasion for growth. It's an opportunity, yeah? These are occasions for growth. And to make progress. They are occurrences for learning and for betterment. Okay? They are experiences born out of patience and tribulation. You see, experiences will work hope in you. That hope will not shame you because the love of God is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. So I'm teaching you business and finances based on the word of God. Romans 3, verse 5. Romans 3, verse 3 to 5. Uh, it's, pardon me, it's Romans 5, verse 3 to 5. Romans 5, verse 3 to 5 says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation works patience. So difficult to make you patient, and patience will give you experience. Remember, experience is one of the definitions of what? Time. And experience will give you hope. And hope does not make you ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit that's given to you. So, I've already defined what time is. What is a chance? A chance is an encounter with a person or with an event, an encounter with a person, with an event. Um, that's a chance. A chance is a meeting with a person or a circumstance. When you meet a person or a circumstance, that's called chance. Okay? So, a chance is an encounter with a person or an encounter with a thing or with an event. It is a meeting with a person or a meeting with a circumstance. It's a reaching out to destiny helpers. That's a chance. Reaching out to the person you know can help you and a person who is willing to help you. It is a going between a person, much like an agent or a broker. So those four agencies or brokerages are, in, in that sense, activating what we in the Bible is called chance. So if you're an agent in real estate or an agent in some insurance thing, if you're a broker of certain things, yeah, any form of brokerage means you probably inadvertently are activating chance as a code of success. The Bible says time and chance are best to all. Okay? Now, when time and chance are in place, and when you use them correctly, your swiftness, your strength, your wisdom, your understanding, and your skills will bring you lasting riches. Now, there was a swift, strong, wise, and discerning and of course, a skillful man that helped defend and deliver a city from the enemy. It was beleaguered and he delivered that city from the enemy. He, however, failed to use that occurrence. He failed to use that experience, that encounter, that meeting and fortune. He failed to use his time and chance for his benefit. He was soon forgotten. And the Bible says a poor man's wisdom is always ignored. Please choose to speak riches so that your words can create riches. Don't speak negative things. This I will tell you for. For as long as God allows me to minister to you, I will tell you to watch your lips, watch your tongue, speak negative things, not even as a joke. Because every time you speak, you're releasing spirits that will cause the words that you've spoken to become material reality. The words you speak will materialize. So don't, don't say, I'm going to kill you, because that will materialize one day. Instead, say, I want you to have good health and long life. Speak things that will cause people to gain that which will benefit them. Yeah? So this guy was forgotten because he was poor. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're not prosperous and successful financially, even if you're speaking what's wise, nobody listens. They may probably just take advantage of you and leave you there languishing in poverty. In Ecclesiastes 9, verse 14 to 16, the Bible says, there was a little city and a few men within it, and there came a great king against it and besieged it and built great bulwarks against it. Now, there was found in it a poor wise man. Poor but wise. You see, wisdom will not necessarily give you bread. Are you getting that? That's what we read in Ecclesiastes 9 verse 11. He was wise but poor. He actually helped using chokhmah. 
Hokma is wisdom for war. He used Hokma wisdom to help defeat this great king. The Bible says, now there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his Hokma, his wisdom, delivered the city. Yet no man remembered that same poor man. Verse 16, it is said, Then said I, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. Okay? So the daily experience is go through in life are supposed to help you so that you can use your time and your chance wisely. If you're watching me and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is your opportunity to make him your Lord and your Savior by getting saved. So say this prayer after me so that you may get saved. He's coming back soon. Okay? This is not some fiction. We're not just talking. We're telling you the truth. Jesus is returning back to his church. Okay? He created the world. He created everybody. He's the King of Kings. He's a lot of gods. You need to trust in him. Say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you're the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and rose for my justification. Today I receive you as Lord and Savior. I receive it and in my spirit. I'm now saved. Glory to God. If you pray that prayer, Jesus is Lord and Savior. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow for prophetic ministry. I've been teaching you on how to hear God by observing animals and plants. Last Tuesday, I talked on about the horse, the different types of horses, and how you can observe them to know what God is speaking about. So tomorrow, I'll take you a notch higher in teaching you how to hear God's voice how to get into the prophetic, especially forensic prophecy by observing nature, okay? I love you so very much. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye.